हे हाय एंड वेलकम बैक इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी सॉ द डिफरेंट स्टेजेस इन्वॉल्व इन हार्डवेयर डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस एंड आई होप दैट यू आर नाउ क्लियर विथ इट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द ब्लॉक डायग्राम ऑफ हार्डवेयर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिजाइन इन दिस ट्रेनिंग सो इन दिस वीडियो यू विल गेट मोर क्लैरिटी अबाउट वॉट टाइप ऑफ हार्डवेयर और वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डिजाइन इन दिस ट्रेनिंग एंड द डिफरेंट ब्लॉक्स इन्वॉल्व इन इट and in the same way whatever product uh, or project you will work on first of all you need to create the block diagram for it all right so let's start with this video now so these are the learning objectives of this video uh, first of all i will show you the different blocks present on the hardware uh, later i will discuss their purpose and working and in the end i will show you how they are connected with microcontroller okay so uh, i said microcontroller because in this training we are going to design a microcontroller based system so it's going to be uh, a lot interesting and you will definitely enjoy it okay now let's start with the block diagram so this is the simplified block diagram of hardware uh, that we are going to design in this training now the blocks that you see in this block diagram Uh, these blocks are basically very common okay and you know you will have to use these blocks multiple times in many of your projects or product that you will work on also in general you know if somebody is getting started with the hardware design then these are basically the blocks with which one should start so considering that i have included these blocks in this hardware and using these blocks we are going to design our hardware so you will definitely enjoy uh, this journey um you know in previous video i told you that uh, generally the client gives us uh, some specifications and based on that we create the block diagram but in our case i directly selected uh, some of the very common blocks and using them we will design our system okay now let me walk you through each of these block one by one so the first block is power supply block now what's the purpose of this power supply block the purpose of this power supply block is to provide the power to the entire blocks or all the blocks which are present on the hardware so that's basically the responsibility of this power supply block now our system our hardware that we are going to design it will be powered by an external 12 volt adapter or external 12 volt dc source okay so that 12 volt input will be provided to the power supply and this power supply is actually going to generate an appropriate voltage on the output side now what will be that voltage this actually depends on the ic's which are actually used in the different blocks so all the ic's that we have used in our system in our hardware they actually works on 5 volt that's why this power supply that we are going to design this power supply is going to provide 5 volt on the output side so what what this power supply is going to do it's going to take the 12 volt on the input side which is basically the dc 12 volt and this power supply is going to generate a 5 volt on the output side and that 5 volt will be provided to the rest of the blocks which are present on the hardware so that's basically the power supply block after that the next block is microcontroller block now i have actually included this micro uh, microcontroller block intentionally in our hardware because i want you guys to create a microcontroller based system now you know whenever there is a microcontroller in the hardware you will be able to create different types of project uh, by programming this particular controller so that actually gives you a lot of flexibility to execute different types of uh, you know application on the same hardware so you can simply program or change the code uh, for this microcontroller and accordingly you can you know control these peripherals which are uh, connected uh, to this microcontroller okay and the microcontroller that we are using on our hardware it's basically atmega 328 ic and this is basically the same ic which actually sits on arduino uno board so we are actually going to design a hardware based on the ic which is used in arduino uno board okay so this hardware that we are going to design it's basically a kind of a customized arduino uno board 
with these different peripherals. So you will be able to program this hardware using the Arduino ID. You will be able to change uh, the code in this controller using Arduino ID and you will be able to, you know, uh, execute different applications on the same hardware. So all the code that we can program on the Arduino Uno board, all those codes you will be able to program in this particular controller because it's basically a kind of a customized Arduino Uno board. So I hope that now you got why I have used this Atmega 328P microcontroller in our hardware. After that, the next block is programmer slash debugger block. Now, you know, whenever you have to program this controller, we are going to use this particular block. And this block is actually nothing but a connector. So we will connect a programmer uh, to this uh, connector. And through that connector, you will be able to program this, uh, this controller. And along with that, if you see here, I have actually written debugger. What exactly that means? You know, when we write the code for the controller or for a specific application, uh, we generally send some data over the UART interface of the controller. Okay. And we actually send that data to the external world. And that external world is actually nothing but the PC. So we send that data and we observe that data on the uh, serial terminal software on the computer. Okay. So from that, you actually get to know like what part of the code is actually executing. So that's basically this block programmer slash debugger block. And I hope that you got it now. After that, the next block is motor driver block. So we have provided a provision in our hardware to control the motors. Okay. So there will be two connectors uh, in our hardware. So to that connector, you will be able to connect the motors. Okay. And this is basically the motor driver I see and using uh, this motor driver IC, you will be able to control the motors in both the direction that is clockwise and anti-clockwise. Okay. So you can see here, there is a connection between the microcontroller and this motor driver IC and by providing appropriate signals to this motor driver IC, you will be able to control the direction of both the motors, which are actually connected to this motor driver IC. And you know, this block, this block motor driver block is actually very uh, popular or it will be used in multiple projects and the products on which you will work. Okay. So you should know how to drive uh, the motors. Uh, that's why I have actually included this particular block because this is basically a very common block and everyone who is getting started with the hardware design, he should know how to drive the motors. Okay. So that was all about the motor driver block. After that, the next block is seven segment display block. Okay. So this is basically the seven segment display block. So there will be a seven segment display, uh, you know, uh, on, on our hardware and on that seven segment display, you will be able to display different numbers starting from zero to nine. Okay. So this is basically a binary to BCD decoder and the responsibility of this IC is to display an appropriate number on this seven segment display. So again, you can see there is a connection between this BC uh, binary to BCD decoder uh, with the controller. So by sending appropriate commands or by sending the appropriate signal combination of signal, uh, we will drive this binary to BCD decoder IC and this IC then will display a appropriate number on this particular uh, seven segment display. Okay. So by writing an appropriate code, you will be able to display an appropriate uh, number on this seven segment display. Again, this block is very common and it will be used in multiple projects and product. That's the reason I have actually included this block. After that, the next block is switch input. Now, instead of this switch input, I should have written here uh, user input switch. So with the help of this block, you can actually provide uh, digital input to this controller like logic zero. Okay. Logic zero or logic one, you can provide to the controller. So based on the input provided by this particular switch, you can actually execute certain action. Okay. For example, you can control the motor or you can change the direction of rotation of the motor, or you can increment the uh, number on this seven segment display. So you can uh, execute desire command. Okay. After that, the next block is potentiometer block. And we have already discussed about this uh, potentiometer component and you already know how exactly it works. So just for the sake of analog input, uh, I have actually used this potentiometer. So by controlling the knob of this potentiometer, 
we will be able to provide a analog input to this controller okay and that analog input is actually going to be in this range which is 0 to 5 volt okay and based on the analog input reading you can actually execute a desired command for example let's say if the analog input is greater than 2.5 volt then rotate this particular motor in clockwise direction and if it is let's say uh, it, uh, if it is less than 3 volt then rotate this particular motor or second motor in anti-clockwise direction okay so based on the readings of this potentiometer you can actually take a suitable action with the help of this controller okay so that's basically the potentiometer now uh, i have actually used this potentiometer just as a simulator uh, in general or in practical world or in real time application there will be an analog sensor here an analog sensor and that sensor is going to provide uh, the reading in this particular range okay and based on the reading of that particular sensor you can actually execute or take certain decision okay so just as a simulator i have actually included this potentiometer block in our hardware after that the next block is rgb led and you already know for what purpose we use the led we use the led for indication purpose okay so instead of using a single color led i have actually used here rgb led which uh, which is going to have uh, three different colors which is red green and blue okay so whatever information that you will get in this particular block it's going to be a lot helpful to you in your projects or product okay not just in case of this rgb block but whatever you will learn while designing this entire system okay all that information is going to be a lot helpful to you while designing your major project or mini project okay or in case if you want to design your own product then this hardware is actually a really good hardware to get started with that okay so i hope that now you have a good clarity about the different blocks which are present on our hardware and i assure you you will definitely enjoy this particular process of building a hardware based on these blocks okay all right so that's what i wanted to tell in this particular video now in next video you will see the hardware overview